Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. Oh, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the ball. And welcome along to this week's GAA podcast. And we have got two cracking provincial finals to look back on. Jackie Tyrrell and Shane McGrath are with me. And look, lads, you both witnessed a two of the greatest spectacles of the year yesterday. And, and Shane, if we could start with that Munster game. I mean, Limerick doing five in a row in Munster, the way that they have done it in this competition, in this era, it, it was just phenomenal, wasn't it? That's sure twice, Jackie, and I suppose... Before the match, like we were kind of wondering, like, can we ask them to go again, you know, and ask them to give them what they've given us over the last couple of years? Um, I went in, I went in fairly early into the game, which is, I, I'd say I was parked up at around half ten, I, I, you know, and there was people up around the Ennis Road at that stage, there's people waiting to get into the terrace before the gates were open, and the pitch was unreal, the weather was unreal. Paddy Casey, Sharon Shannon, Mundy had the whole lot of it there before it, and you were like going right. Is the game going to live up to it? Like, and sure, it did. Like, you know, now hurling wise, I actually think I actually think the Leinster final is actually a better final hurling wise. Uh, I think there was a lot of mistakes in the Munster final, but it's just because of the nerves and the atmosphere, Jackie. I suppose, and that's that's only natural. Um, you know, I, I, I a big talking point, I suppose, Jackie, is the free at the end, and um, I'm sure the other Jackie like would it's, it, it would have been there and seen it, and hope you enjoyed your first Munster final, Jackie. Uh, oh, he did. So he you, brought out the full yeah. three-piece suit and the whole shaman yeah. just to enjoy it. <laughs> well, it's fair funny beforehand. We're going in long and uh, myself and Milan were walking in and uh, there was us. And we, we were like dressed for the beach and we met Joe and Shane Dowling and they were dressed for a wedding and uh, and the day after <laughs> the kind of thing. So uh, I suppose that's the difference between doing the radio and the TV just to give a bit of background to people. But um, the big the big thing for me is not the free at the end. While it was a free, I think that where Claire lost this was... There was two periods of play, Jackie, in my opinion, right? Before half time, um, they're going through and um Ryan Taylor misses a pint. It was one eleven to ten points at the time. That would make it one twelve to ten. Then he's going through again and he says maybe he doesn't have the confidence in himself to take on the shot. But and he pops it out to Mark Rogers, who goes for the goal and rightly so. But let's say if they go over the bar, it's one thirteen to ten. What happens, Jackie, is they get saved, brilliant save, go up the field, and they go in at half time, one eleven to eleven rather than one thirteen to ten. That's one that's one stage of the game, I thought. And then the second stage of the game is when it was one twenty to one nineteen, they had three shots at the goal. Tony Tony Kelly dropped one short, David Fitz had a wide, and I'm not sure who had the other wide. It 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 it, it might have been Ryan Taylor as well. So while they could say the free at the end, yeah, it was they were hard done by it was a free. I think they shouldn't dwell on that too much and maybe look at, right, we actually had chances to win the game. We just didn't take them. Take the positives out of it. Take the learnings out of it and, and, and move on uh, to an all quarter quarterfinal, Jackie. But look, it had it all. It had everything. Lots and lots of talking points in there. But for me, Limerick just once again proved why they, why they are the best team in the country, why... They're just so hard to beat. They're winning matches by one, two points, and no more so than, than Jackie's team at Kilkenny. They're winning games maybe when they shouldn't be winning them. And I think that's that just, you can't, with all the stats in the world um, for the both of you lads, you can't measure someone's character and someone's spirit with a stat. And I think that's that's what they have in abundance. Like, Yeah, they were unbelievable. I'm sure they felt that way up close and personal, Jackie, yesterday as well, watching them in the flesh. Yeah, it, it's pretty impressive to see them right up in the as you say, up close and personal. And Tom Morrissey came up to the platform afterwards and he walked past me. By God, what a specimen of a man. And and like, he, he it was very interesting in his interview and one of the guys, uh, Dale asked him the question about half time that they felt that they were, you know, maybe being bossed around and they were losing the possession. And he quickly put them in their place and said, no, we, we he, and he was able to back up. They were, they knew exactly what was going on. They knew exactly what they needed to do. So, I don't think to Shane's point, I don't think this team know any other way than to fight, than to just get up and go again. And there'll come a day where they'll just run out legs and they'll just run out the tank will run dry. But they don't know any other way. They're up two points, down ten points, whatever. They just keep going, they keep going. And ultimately they take their chances when they're presented to them. And I counted seven or eight scores, points that Claire left out there, whether it was drop short poor wides or poor execution. I counted Limerick maybe two or three 
Dierma Byrne who's had a, had a poor three in the first half. Uh, there was another um, there was another chance as well. And ultimately, the, the fine margins, it comes down to those key decisions. And Clare just didn't make the right ones. And I think it's quite different to last month, last year's Munster final where Clare will felt after that that they threw everything at Limerick and they just came up ever so short. Maybe they just ran out a bit of legs. I think this year they'll be going away going, we made some poor decisions. We got the whole Aaron Galan thing wrong. And we definitely left that 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 behind us, and uh, that chance could have been gone. So, but Limerick are five in a row champions. They're outstanding team. Aaron Galan, what a performance yesterday! Um, and you just have to take your hats off to them and say they're still the number one team in the country. I don't think they were ever knocked off that perch, but they just always find an eco away. Do you think, Shane, based on what you saw then yesterday, Limerick finding a way, they've got four weeks off, another chance to get Keane Lynch in. Are they the All-Ireland favourites now again? Actually, sure, they are, Jackie. Like, there's no point in saying anything else, I suppose. Like, they weren't going well and they were still winning games. Now they're Munster champions. Now they have four weeks off. They'll obviously enjoy last night. They'll probably enjoy today too if they're, if they're right about the whole thing, I think. I think these, thing, these things are there to be enjoyed. Um as you said, you gives gives Keane Lynch a chance to, as as John Kiley said, come back, be fully right. You know, the competition for places in the in the internal games, the A versus B, is going to be phenomenal over the next few weeks. Like say Colin O'Neill is comes up with two points yesterday, Peter Casey comes on, works ferociously hard. Like everybody wants to play, like like Jackie'll tell you that as well. Like, I mean, when you get to All Ireland's get to get up to Crow Park, it's nice being there. But and, and don't get me wrong, those sub seats are very, very comfy. They're probably the comfiest in Ireland. But I tell you, you don't want to be sitting on them. Like you want to be involved. So like John Kiley, like I just think with the group they have, they don't have to do too much motivation because it's just like, right, we've won that. Let's enjoy this now. Absolutely great achievement. Paul Neil, do you want to start the next day? Do you want to start the next day, Peter Casey? Jamie Flanagan, not good enough. No score from play. Do you want to start the next day? Or if you don't want to start, I'll start Graham Mulcahy or I'll start David Reedy or I've Keen Lynch coming in. Just in the forward line, like you know, the, the competition in the back thing. Colin Cochran comes on, does very, very well, works hard. Rich English. I just think the competition is what's keeping them going. Like, there's no, there can be no kind of, um, you know, you're just happy that you you kind of did well and you know you're going to be there. You know, again the next day, there is no complacency. Is what I, the word I'm looking for with them, Jackie. And I think that's what makes them a very, very good team and very, very hard to beat. Is what's going on inside. They're all driving each other because they all want to play. They all want to be part of it. So I think that, that that motivation and that want that want to will and that will to win comes internally from the group and they'll have four weeks now and they'll go at it hard. You know, this not this week, but you know, next week, the week after. And I and as I said, that last A versus B game on the Saturday or Sunday before an all Ireland semi final, it would be it would be serious to win and watch it to see the competition for places that they have like. Mm. And I said, I said, they'll go out hard today, Shane, too. Oh, yeah, come here. And they're dead right, Jackie. Do you know what I mean? I suppose we were coming from a time where there was no round robin. We're not all as no by any means. None of, us, <laughs> none of us here. But, like, I mean, we enjoyed them. We enjoyed Munster finals, Jackie. I know you enjoyed your Leinster finals as well when you won them. And yeah. the, the, Monday, the Monday was the day. Like, it was, it, you could get to meet all your, your, maybe your buddies from around home and, and lads you hadn't seen in a while. And you just enjoy it. And I think, I think it's kind of gone, it's gone away from that more and more, lads. I think. The enjoyment has to be there. I hope these lads get to enjoy it. And I hope that we're living in a world of phones and videos. I, I just hope they're just let enjoy the day now because they deserve it and be singing songs there by three or four o'clock today and might be shook tomorrow. But you know what? They'll be fine. They'll dust themselves off and they'll go at it again Wednesday or Thursday day in a training. Like. Yeah. Well, come here. If the, if the Kilkenny celebrations on the pitch, uh, if they celebrated like that on the pitch, Jackie, I can't even imagine what the Kilkenny lads are doing today because it looked like they were living their best lives after winning that Leinster title yesterday. Yeah, Jackie, there was definitely an, an outpouring of emotion after Afterwards, you've seen how much they celebrated. I know it was a kind of a, a snatch and grab kind of victory at the end, but like a big pile up with Killian at the end. I thought that was lovely the way Derek celebrated. And it was it was just we haven't seen that from Kenny. And you know, for a team that won four in a row, there was just a lot of emotion wrapped up in them. We've seen Killian Buckley's interview, you know, of, of probably one of his most special days. Um so you know, it, it and even I've seen some of the stuff last night of some of the, the players that they're putting up. They met up with Mikey Carey last night, who was quite sick. So the group seems very united. It seems very tight. And there's no doubt about it. They'll celebrate today. They'll go out. They'll have a few beers because four in a row uh, Leinster titles is, is, is one to be cherished. Um, so it, it was great. And there definitely seems to be a really, really good bond. And maybe that's the fact that 
they were probably so thin on the ground yesterday with the amount of injuries. Like you, you think Adrian Mullen was gone, Mossy Clone wasn't right going into it. He came off. Richie Reid didn't start. Michael Carey had to uh, had to cry off. So you know they were really back to the wall. And the amazing thing of, of that final scenario in, in the corner when everyone seemed punch drunk. It was TJ Reid at 35 years of age. I was sitting there grafting, picked out a little ball, flicked it. John Donny flicked. You know, like like they just they just. They don't wilt this, they go on, they stay going. The goal was kind of fortuitous enough, you know, Paul McMahon probably kicked the ball too well to Killian Buckley, but you know, it's just amazing. And I think that they might I don't know if anyone's seen there might be an extra man to celebrate <laughs> because I, I think someone slipped on the field to, to teach you after the after the length of final, which it was kind of funny, but it was kind of very unique as well. Ah, so. it was fantastic. For people who haven't seen it, like your man is in dress shoes. He looks like he has a box of fags inside him, the socks. He has the helmet on. He walks past the guards, the stewards, everything. <laughs> but do you know the best thing is, Shane, not only does he go over to TJ, TJ's like, yeah, I'm fierce obliging. I'll put back on the helmet. Ah, come here, early, yeah. Take the picture. It's phenomenal. That's brilliant, lads. Come here. I'm going dressing up as Larry McCarthy. You've got Larry <laughs> the final so I can get the seat right in the middle of the field there. So it'll be grand. But... Uh, I I just think it's that I love the I love that I love seeing that the video going around there all the WhatsApp groups. You're mad, it's hilarious. And I just love the fact that TJ is as cool as a breeze and just chatting away to him as if he's wanted to kill Kenny panel like it. <laughs> T, like for me, lads, TJ is the greatest hurler ever. And I, I, I often have this debate with people. I, and just Jackie, as you said, like 35 years of age, I I was doing well to try and get even you know try and hold me all in club games and like we'd be third tier and tip fourth tier this year at 35 and there he is in the corner open that top right hand corner box just even being there and being able to do it and it just shows I suppose the way he minds himself off the field and you know I know he's a daddy now as well so he might be getting the same amount of sleep as he was getting a few years ago so but you know maybe maybe the arrival of, of, his, of his little girl hel- is helping him to play with more freedom as well maybe it is you know maybe he's Big perspective now as well. He's not putting himself under the same pressure. But there he was there yesterday. I was delighted for Killian Buckley as well. I had great battles with Killian Buckley. And I tell you, and I would say this about all the Kilkenny boys, I've always said it, absolute gentleman on and off the field. And Killian Buckley is one of them. Um, you know, I had great battles with him. And I loved seeing the bit of motion in him. I suppose I was a kind of a heart in the sleeve person, maybe fist pumping there even before the National Anthem would be on some days and stuff. But I, I loved seeing the... A bit of emotion in Killian there afterwards, Jackie, as well. Um, just what it meant to him, I suppose. Like, uh, I never scored a goal in championship. I don't know, did you score a goal in championship, Jackie? But I tell you. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I was, uh, I, I never did. I, I never even had a shot at goal, I'd say. And uh, I you know what it meant to him to win the Leinster final. As he said, I love seeing the emotion he's interviewed. It is the stuff of dreams. That's outside the back garden stuff. Getting the ball, crow park, bang it in the net, run out. And I loved seeing as you said Jackie about about the group there's a great camaraderie with them um, you know they're trying something different this year you know as in maybe a style of play they've all bought into it I think they love I think they love playing for Derek and a lot of them would have played under him and and then you know, underage and then a lot of them would have just respect him for what he did as a player himself and then Michael Rice and Peter Barry and you know Kilkenny greats on the sideline there I, I, I just think it is a very close group and I made the absolute worst call of all time there starting the year I didn't have Kilkenny in the top five uh, I think I kind of did it was kind of a boring time during the league maybe get a bit of talk going I was 100% wrong as Kilkenny have proven time and time again there they are in all in the semi-final and to both of you lads you know most teams won't mind playing them Jackie you know but, 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 but that's, that's where they're at because they're getting it done and I, I just think why most teams would say, right, who would you matter play? Let's be all honest here. Kilkenny or Limerick are in the same final. They'll all say, geez, we'll try and get through this side and play Kilkenny. But Kilkenny will prove once again, I suppose, why, why they are so good, why you've won so much. And again, I go back to that thing about you can't measure character, you can't measure spirit. The man before, Derek, always said, use the word spirit with G, Jackie. And I think that's there with this group as well, a, a new, younger group as well. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love to see all the, the outpour of emotion there after the game, like. Yeah, it was magic. And come here, if uh, Killian Buckley deserved all the headlines, so did Mikey Butler. I'm telling you, justice for the defenders scoring these days, Jackie. You'd have been, you'd have loved these days. No, I don't. I'm so sure about that now, Jackie. <laughs> but it was, like, it was, because, so David Blanchfield caught the ball. He's your wing back. And gave a, it was kind of reminded me of Ben and Jerry O'Connor. Do you know they used to do the one, two up the field and then it was a score? Mm. Gave it to Mikey Butler. Mikey Butler gives it back. Mikey continues to run on. Then it kind of just opened up. 
And before he knew it, he was bearing down in goal. Dottie Burke was coming across, but a lovely little sh- sh- shimmy and buried it. And the thing I loved about him was he, he had a cracking little smile on his face after that. I'd say he just couldn't believe that he scored a goal in the Leinster final. What would That's Brian the- Cody have said to you if you found yourself up there? Go back, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> 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 he wouldn't have had to say that. Lats would have. Lats would just give me a look. Going, what are you doing? Here? You're whatever. Next who you said before. But that's the game, Jackie. And it's in a brilliant. You see Barry Nash scoring a goal. Die Burke scoring a goal. And there's a real expectancy now on defenders to get up the field, support the play, and to contribute on the scoring board. And we see it right across the board. And there's a license for players to get forward. There's, you know, you you you, you see it right across the board. And it's great to see. I think Mikey Butler scored a point last year. He now has a goal as well. So. Um, that's just the evolution of the game and it, it, it was like a crucial, crucial score so was. Mm. And come here, Jackie, how highly now do you rate this Kilkenny team in terms of like, they'll like Limerick, they'll have four weeks off. As Shane says, maybe people won't fear them, but I don't know if Kilkenny had fear too many teams coming at them on the other side of the track either. No, they won't. Look, you look at the 15 and, and, and the subs and it wouldn't have the quality of, we say, a, a, a Limerick or maybe even a Clare. By God, are they getting the most out of themselves? They're very hard to beat, so they are. And Derek, although it hasn't really been highlighted, like the amount of new people he's been bringing in, like David Blanchfield, I thought was outstanding yesterday. Derek Corcoran has a wing back. He positioned Billy Ryan now back out to half forward. John Donnelly, who was kind of out in the cold for a long while, he, he's, he's centre forward. He's building his team around him. Tom Phelan is consistently playing. So probably a third of the team, Jackie, is new. But it does give him a chance now to get these bodies right, to get Mossy Keown back, give Billy Drennan maybe a bit more time, obviously give TJ a bit of downtime. Adrian Mullen, I don't think he's going to make, maybe make it back for a semi-final, but he pushed very close. So I'd highly, I'd, 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 I'd really give him a great chance. Of course, Shane is right. People will look at Limerick or Kilkenny and go rather play in Kilkenny. Um, but it probably looks like it's going to play be with, you know, with all due respect to Joe Mack, it'll be Dublin or Clare. Will Clare want to fancy to come back to Kenny again? They probably will feel a bit irked, but it's how they recover from that. So, Kenny are in a great position now, and they'll go away in their training weekend now, and they'll probably come into the All Ireland semi final below the radar. If we get Adrian Mullen back, that would be huge, Jackie. So, give him a really good chance. Mm. Let's finish off then, lads, on the two beaten teams this weekend. Do you think Shane, Clare, or Galway? can recover from this and still mount a serious challenge or how damaged do you think both of them are after yesterday? I think Clare have the better advantage there anyway, Jackie, because what, 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 what Jackie T was saying there, last year they gave everything. Like they, they performed probably to their max last year in the Munster final and didn't win. They didn't probably all reach their max potential this year. For example, we'll say Tony Kelly finished very strong. He scored 13 points in the most final last year. Uh, I even down he scored six points, I think, in the most final this year. So he'll probably look at that as the standards he sets in. I can go better. Their talisman for the year has been Aidan McCarthy. Taken off very, very quickly. I have it down that he was taken off uh, 44 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, he'll probably look at his own personal performance. Get Try and get Conor Cleary back. So I think Clare maxed out last year and didn't win. They didn't get, they didn't reach it this year and should have won. So what I'm saying is they'll probably look at it. Look, there's more and more in us here, lads. They'll play the winners of Dublin or Carlo, and they will fancy that, right? I just think that Galway are going to find it very, very hard to recover from this. I think it's another year gone. Um, you know, the record in Crow Park is poor, lads, since they've won the All Ireland final in 2017. I don't know the exact stat in it, but they haven't won won there maybe much at all since they won the All Ireland in 2017. I, I stand to be corrected there. Um. Their, their road back now is very, very hard. Like, I think, say, they're going to play the winners of Tip or Offaly. Yeah. And say, you take Tip, they should be, Carl should be, Carl Barrett should be back, Jace Ford should be okay, hopefully Jake Morris. Do you know what? They'll, they'll be hurt from their performance against Watford, so they'll be coming in all guns blazing. And, you know, they, Carl would have to try and get over that. And then if they win that, they'd be playing Limerick in the semi final. Like, I'm saying it's a much harder road for Galway. I think of the two teams you asked me about, Jackie Clare or Galway, I think Clare will recover better from this. I think Galway, you know, psychologically as well, I think they're going to find it hard to bounce back from that yesterday. That was there in the palm of their hands and they will be absolutely, they will be feeling sorry for themselves, rightly so, because that is the most horrible way to lose a game. What a way to win it. But that's going to take, that's going to take a week, 10 days to try and get over that mentally. Like, and 
you know, so look, I think I think Clare are in a better place as well. And one more thing, Jackie, as well, I see unknowns yourself. You're 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 kind of gone over to the Kilkenny side. I can't believe Don Logue didn't pull you on it. You had the black and amber on last night in the telly. I thought your fellow Cork man would have pulled you on it, but uh, you got Listen, away with it. You, you're supporting totally the accidental. Totally, no, no, accidental. no, no. no. It was you only I copped have... it afterwards. I got hammered by my Kilkenny cousins as well afterwards. You can't, you can't have, you can't have yellow shoes and the black pants like that on without knowing what you're doing, Jackie. So fair play, uh, to you. you're, 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 you're nailing your colours to the vest there. I'm telling you, yeah. as Jackie Tyrrell will tell you, sometimes the style just matters more. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's important too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jackie, last word to you then on that. What do you reckon, Galway or Clare? Who can recover better? Can either of them still go for an All Ireland title? Do you reckon? Jackie, the most dangerous team in the country right now <coughs> is Tipperary, excuse me. And if you give me a thousand euro, I would think strongly about putting on Tipperary to the All Ireland. That's how. Yes, lad. You're telling you, the games you will continue to play this season no, won't I, stop I, anyone I, here. He I always just, loved Tip, Jackie, even in college, yeah. even in LIT, boy, he was on. <laughs> tip, 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 tip. I, I just think they are going to be such a tough proposition for this Galway team. They're coming in in com- two completely different mindsets. I thought Henry's interview afterwards was interesting where he said they're actually they're in there feeling sorry for themselves I thought that was a very very interesting line from to come out with I, I, I just I don't think I've ever heard a manager say that like mm-hmm. you know um, so I think he's going to have a big job to lift those guys again I think Tip will be fresh I think they'll have a bounce in their step like Shane has alluded to the lads coming back I heard Craig Morgan comes coming back so they, they without being dismissive to Offaly they should get over the line there and I'd have to, you'd have to, I'd fancy Tip you know, to, to, to maybe do a job on Gala because they have a big job to, to pick themselves up. You just kind of be scratch your head with Gala this morning and go, God, where do we go from here? Like, you know, um, and I think Claire do probably have an, a, an easier passage and they have some scope probably to improve. So I'd probably have to fancy fancy Claire to, to have a better chance of bouncing back and maybe having a real go out in All Ireland here. Mm-hmm. But this will be, sorry, this will be a huge test. Henry, how he picks up this Galway team and how he rejigs the team and gets a bit of life into it. Like some of the key lads, Tom Mon and Connor, Connor Cooney, Joseph Cooney, just weren't at the races yesterday. Yeah, no, they weren't, but he's got a bit of time to think about it. Lads, we'll have to leave it there. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks a million uh, for great chats after a phenomenal weekend. Shane and Jackie will be with us right throughout the season, and we are looking forward to it. Can't wait to keep going. Talk to you all soon. Oh, he's got, there's the whistle. It's over. It's over.